Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Dr. Tarkeshwar, good afternoon. Everybody good to go? Ready with... Good afternoon, Pragya. So, everybody ready with the Josh? Yes, come on. Ready with the Josh? So it was a very good uh, series with all of you and hopefully this is the last class, okay, right, really it was a very good journey with all of you, you all were very intelligent and you have done all the things very well, right, you have done all the things very well. You are a very nice students, very sincere students. Proud to be your teacher. Proud to be your teacher. With the hopes that you will deliver, apply all the concept to the patients and me, will, me too will get good students after that. Let's start our today's session. So in the gynae, the first thing first is the menstrual cycle. Uh, good, good morning, Isra. So first of all, the hypothalamus on the puberty, on the puberty, the hypothalamus it releases GnRH. Again, the hypothalamus it releases GnRH, and this GnRH acts on the pituitary. Okay, this GnRH acts on the pituitary, and and the pituitary in the response releases FSH. The pituitary releases. Good afternoon, Ayushi. Good afternoon, Happy. In the in the response, the pituitary releases FSH. FSH is released when the pulse is fast, when the pulse is fast and this FSH acts on follicle as the name suggests and it matures the follicles. On maturation the follicles releases, on maturation the follicle releases estrogen, on maturation the follicle releases estrogen and this estrogen then acts on the uterus and proliferates the uterus endometrium right at its peak at its peaks this at its peaks it has a positive feedback effect on nlh which was our pyq which was our pyq okay this lh causes the ovulation this lh causes the ovulation and as a result the corpus luteum is formed when the progesterone levels are very low this progesterone causes secretory changes on the endometrium. Secretory changes on the endometrium. And when the progesterone levels are very low, they cause positive feedback. And then again the next cycle is started. Okay. So let us see the effects of estrogen and progesterone on the different uh, end organs. Right. On all the different end organs, what are the effect of estrogen and progesterone? On as we studied on the endometrium, the estrogen causes proliferation, whereas the progesterone stops the proliferation and and makes the gland secretory. Okay. Next is the cervical mucus becomes thin, stretchable. It shows a spin bucket effect and the forming both, whereas the progesterone makes the cervical mucus as anxiety. That is why Ayushi anxiety is occurring because you have set your goals high, right? Talk to me after this session. We will relieve all your anxiety, right? 
I'm famous for relieving the anxiety, right? Talk to me after this session. We will relieve all your anxiety. Just hold your anxiety for a few minutes. Can you do it? Okay. So, vagina cells, they mature under the effect of estrogen. They mature and as a result, increased glycogen goes into the vagina cells because they are getting matured, right? And the superficial cells, they when they mature, there is more and more superficial cell, lactobacillus, and there is acidic pH, and there is acidic pH. The intermediate, in, uh, due to the progesterone, the vagina walls, they have more of intermediate cells, which have blue cytoplasm. Intermediate cells, they are less mature as compared to the superficial cells. The fallopian tube motility is increased is due to the estrogen whereas due to the progesterone their motility gets decreased. Their motility gets decreased. These are some basics which will be asked in your exam one or the other way. One or the other way they will be asking you these basics. Okay. So please uh, do it nicely. Coagulation profile is increased. You all know estrogen increases the coagulation profile. Estrogen increases the uh, clotting factors. All clotting factors are increased by the estrogen. There is no effect on the bones. It causes osteogenesis. Now let us study the development of female genital tract, which is very very important. Okay, if the if the Y chromosome SRY gene, it acts on the genital ridge. If the Y chromosome SRY gene, it acts on the genital ridge, then there is formation of testes. And if there is no such action, then there is formation of ovaries. Then there is formation of ovaries. Okay. Then there are Wolfian ducts, whose another name is mesonephric duct. When the testosterone acts on this Wolfian duct, when the testosterone acts on this Wolfian duct, uh, the testosterone is made by the Leydig cells of the testes, as you all know. When the testosterone acts on this Leydig, uh, on the Wolfian duct, it forms the male internal genital tract, which is remembered by the mnemonic seed, seminal vesicle, ejaculatory duct, epididymis, and vas deferens. And when there is no action of the testosterone, dear students. There is formation of apoophron, paraophron, and the Gartner cyst. Apoophron, paraophron, and the Gartner cyst. On the Mullerian duct, the AMH, which is released by the Sertoli cells present in the testes, they act, and there is formation. And and uh, uh, in the uh, males, when it get regresses. Due to the uh, AMH and there is uh, remnant Mullerian duct which form, form the hydrated of Morgagni and appendix of testes. So all the organs which get uh, end up they form the, uh, all the ducts which regress they are gathered near the gonads, gonadal organs. Okay. The fallopian tube oops, uh, in the female it forms Fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix, and upper one third vagina. So it is quite expected. It will be asked from you what are Mullerian duct derivatives? What are Mullerian duct derivatives? Okay. True hermaphrodite is said to those in where the gonadal tissue contains both type male and female. The most common genotype which is associated with the true hermaphrodite is 46 XX. Is 46 XX. So, true hermaphrodite is the one where the gonadal tissue is containing the both ovary and the testicular tissue. Pseudo hermaphrodite means the gonadal tissue it is of the one type, but due to the problem of the androgens or the testosterone, the external genitalia is of the different sex. Okay, the gonadal tissue was of one type, but due to the uh, due to the problem of testosterone. There is problem in the phenotype or the external genitalia. If in the females there is androgen axis, then 
the uh, genitalia will be male and in, if in the male there is androgen decrease the genitalia will be female as you all know okay genital tubercle genital tubercle when it is acted by testosterone it forms the penis and it forms the penis and in the female in the absence of the testosterone it forms the clitoris the genital swellings in the presence of testosterone they fuse and they form the scrotum and when they don't fuse they form the labia majora so it is very clear if the testosterone are present then there will be the male genitalia and if the testosterone are absent then there will be the female genitalia no doubt in that now male male pseudo hermaphrodite will be formed if the genotype is xy but the female genitalia is absent and there is uh, their male genitalia is absent and instead of that there is female external genitalia it will only occur if the testosterones which were making the which were making the female genitalia they are not functional they are not functional which happens in androgen insensitivity syndrome androgen insensitivity syndrome and the mrkh they have the similar clinical features as though they are very different problems the both androgen insensitivity syndrome and the mrkh both of them present with primary amenorrhea at the puberty they both have the breast the breast is well developed secondary sexual characteristics they are well developed the uterus is absent dono mein hi uterus absent hota hai theek hai and female external genitalia dono mein hota hai matlab wo pure female lagti hain and the patient they present their complaint is mainly the primary amenorrhea now what concept of features is what are the features by which we will differentiate that they are not uh, male and they are female or they are ais or uh, syndrome um in the androgen insensitivity syndrome there is testes where as in the in the um, uh, mrkh there is ovaries pubic and axillary hairs they are absent in the ais due to the androgen insensitivity syndrome whereas they are present in the case of the mrkh okay the breast is found in the androgen insensitivity syndrome um because there is increased androgens the level of androgen is that of the that of the uh, the level of androgen is that of the males and these increased androgen are acted upon by the aromatase enzyme and estrogens are formed whereas the in the mrkh normally there is estrogen formed in the ovary as ovary is present so there is breast development both have to undergo vaginoplasty because vagina is absent in them both have to undergo vaginoplasty the ais also has to go, go undergo gonadectomy the uh, AIS they as they don't have any egg so they have to undergo adoption process whereas the uh, MRKH uh, people they have the egg so they can undergo surrogacy unka surrogacy se kaam par chal jayega unko sirf uterus lena padega unke paas apna khud ka egg hoga okay so let us discuss about the female pseudo hermaphrodite female pseudo hermaphrodite of course because the absence of testosterone makes the uh, female genitalia now if there is in any problem there is excess of androgens then there will be the female genitalia now on um, the androgens in the congenital life are found in the adrenal cortex are found in the adrenal cortex if there is 21 hydroxylase deficiency in the adrenal cortex then there will be no aldosterone and cortisol as a result there will be increased androgen so whenever there will be 21 hydroxylase deficiency there will be less aldosterone and cortisol less aldosterone and cortisol produces a clinical stage of dehydration and hyponatremia hyponatremia and increased androgen they cause the ambiguous genitalia so because the androgens are increased so their substrate is also increased 17 hydroxy progesterone is also increased okay so primary amenorrhea 
to define a thing as primary amenorrhea if the breast is absent breast is absent always means that estrogen is absent so if the breast is absent the age to define it as primary amenorrhea is 13 years and if the breast is present it means that the estrogen is present it means that the estrogen is is present the age to define the primary amenorrhea is 15 years so it means we can wait a little bit long these definitions are very very important they are frequently asked in your exams okay if the in the case of primary amenorrhea in which the uh, in which the uh, no, periods has not come if the breast is present then we have to look for the uterus if the uterus is also present then it is a cryptomenorrhea case yani periods are being produced but they are not coming out and the causes of cryptomenorrhea students is imperforate hymen most commonly and the another causes transvaginal septum imperforate hymen is present at introsius and the transvaginal septum is deep inside near the cervix okay if the breast is present but the uterus is absent and confirmed by ultrasound so if the uterus is absent on the clinical examination by doing the pa or pv and by per rectal examination you have to confirm it by ultrasound so next step if the uterus is absent you is that you have to do the ultrasound for it okay so now you know the mullerian agenesis and androgen insensitivity syndrome are the two differential diagnoses how we will differentiate i have already told you you have to look for the axillary hairs you have to look for the axillary hairs if axillary hairs or the pubic hair they are present then it is mullerian agenesis and if they are absent then it is androgen insensitivity syndrome that means that you are dealing with a male pseudo hermaphrodite okay if the breast is absent if the breast is absent of course you will diagnose the primary amenorrhea by the age of the 13 there are only two problems they are calmen or turner okay they are calmen and turner so how you will differentiate between the imperforate hymen and the transvaginal septum you should know that the transvaginal septum is at the is at the uh, cervix whereas the imperforate hymen is at the introsius so it is between the cervix and vagina whereas the obstruction is at the introsius so there is hematometra so the blood collection hematometra is there the blood collection is in the uterus whereas there is hematocorpus all of this you can appreciate on the per rectum the treatment of imperforate hymen is of course cruciate incision right androgen insensitivity syndrome and the uh, mrkh we have differentiated now let us differentiate on the basis turner and calman in the turner has xo and the calman is xx right there is gonadal dysgenesis in the turner and there is no gnr so the levels of F lh and fsh as i always tell you if estrogen is absent due to the gonadal fault the fsh and lh they increase if estrogen is absent due to the hypothalamus hypothalamus fault then lh and fsh will decrease so in the turner there will be increase of lh and fsh whereas in the calman there will be decrease of lh and fsh that is their name hypergonadotropic hypogonadism hypogonadotropic hypogonadism in the turner there is a short stature short choti height ki ladki aayegi bahut sari problems hongi whereas in the calman it will be a very normal and the typical characteristic which they will be asking you in exam is anosmia in the calman there is anosmia the treatment of the uh, turner is estrogen and progesterone whereas the treatment of calman is pulsatile gnrh okay pulsatile gnrh okay so let's discuss the turner syndrome features it is quite commonly asked in your exam it is very 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 important 
okay there is short stature height is very short in the turner right there is sensory neural hearing loss sensory neural hearing loss hota hai theek hai unko sunai nahi deta low set ears low jaw line sheep chest and web neck short foot metacarpal there is also cubitus valgus so orthopedician defectus cubitus valgus their intelligence is very normal this is what is asked in your exam their intelligence is very very normal okay the most common cvs anomaly again which is asked in your exam is bicuspid aortic valve the most common cvs anomaly is bicuspid aortic valve right the another problem are diabetes and hypertension in them they have streaconax and no breast and amenorrhea okay so that's it secondary dysmenorrhea we have different causes okay Okay, the physiological causes of secondary dysmenorrhea are pregnancy, which is the most common cause, and the another causes are lactation and menopause. Pregnancy and the other causes are lactation and menopause. Okay, the physiological causes, the pathological causes of the secondary dysmenorrhea is if the if the hypothalamus stops releasing GnRH, which is seen in anorexia nervosa. there is no release of gnrh if the pituitary stops releasing fsh that is seen in the sheehan syndrome where they will be characteristically giving you history of aph and the lactation will be absent and the, all the hormones which are produced by pituitary they are not produced then there is gonadal failure then there is gonadal failure primary ovarian insufficiency or menopause on all of these condition the fsh lh decreases and the history which the patient gives is hot flushes and in the pcos there is hirsutism and there is increase in the lh only in the ashman syndrome there is history of dnc and the all hormones are normal all hormones are normal okay so ashman syndrome patient gives the history of dnc this is a very important question that what is the presentation of the female on the of the ashman syndrome the presentation of the female of the ashman syndrome is infertility the most common presentation is infertility okay the most common presentation is infertility that will be asked this is the uh, hsg of the ashman syndrome which is characterized by filling defects the fsh and lh they are normal in the range of 6 to 10 okay the treatment it has got a three series of treatment not the one they are hysteroscopic edisiolysis intrauterine pediatric follicular catheter and high dose os ocp pills high dose estrogen containing ocp pills with for the endometrial proliferation now let us see the endometriosis in the endometriosis the endometrium has opened its new branch okay the endometriosis uh, and the endometrium has opened its new branch so as i told you all this condition endometrioma endometriosis adenomyosis fibroid and pcos all these conditions they are the hyperestrogenic conditions they are the hyperestrogenic condition okay they are the hyperestrogenic conditions and all of them they presents with menorrhagia you know that in the pcos there is oligomenorrhea which is followed by menorrhagia okay there is oligomenorrhea which is followed by menorrhagia right and wherever there is endometriosis endometrium moves from one side and goes to the one another extra side there will be dysmenorrhea so the pehla teen wala unme teeno mein there is dysmenorrhea okay and because in the endometriosis the endometrium is going in the pouch of douglas so there is dyspareunia there is also dyspareunia now with the uh, going of the endometrium in the endometrioma and endometriosis there is infertility due to the toxins in or due to the adhesions in the pouch of douglas good afternoon ramya so there is uh, uh, there is uh, the inflammation it causes the 
uh, production of the toxins, the chronic inflammation which is due to the shedding of the endometrium, it causes the production of uh, inflammatory toxins and as a result wherever the endometrium is, irrespective of the fact it is in the ovary or it is in the pouch of Douglas, it will cause adhesion, it will cause the infertility. Okay, right? And on the PV, wherever there is endometrium, there is PV, there is tender adnexal mass as and the uterus size is normal. Whereas in the adenomyosis and in the fibroid, the uterus is increased in the size. The uterus is increased in the size in the case of the of the endometriosis and sorry in the adenomyosis and in the uh, fibroid. So adenomyosis or fibroid may uterus ka size increase hoga and in the endometrioma which is the endometrium in the ovary and the endometriosis which is endometrium in the pouch of Douglas. Okay? So in the endometrioma and in the pouch of Douglas the uterus size will be normal. Many questions are being asked that how you will differentiate clinically between all these conditions okay so i have told you jahan tak symptoms ki baat hai aapko symptoms mein kya dekhna hai ki endometrioma endometriosis and adenomyosis or fibroid sab mein common symptom hai menorrhagia jahan jahan pe endometrium is going to is opening its another branch wahan wahan pe dysmenorrhea hoga theek hai क्योंकि एंडोमेट्रियोसिस में एंडोमेट्रियम पाउच ऑफ डगलस में जा रही है इसलिए वहां पे डिस्पैरियूनिया होता है ओके एंडोमेट्रियोमा इज एंडोमेट्रियम इन द चॉकलेट वहां पे डिस्पैरियूनिया नहीं हो ओके इन द ऑल द एडिनोमायोसिस अकर्स इन द लेट एज तो वहां पे इनफर्टिलिटी नहीं होगा बिकॉज फर्टिलिटी इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड देयर अदरवाइज एंडोमेट्रियोसिस एज अ रूल इट कॉजेस इनफर्टिलिटी okay because inflammation produces such a toxins that it is difficult for the uh, for the uh, zygote or for the conceptus to implant right wherever there is endometrium keep uh, implantation hai wahan pe tender word zarur likha hoga wahan tender word zarur likha hoga in the endometrioma and in the endometriosis uterus will be in the normal size and the uterus will be increased in size okay the treatment of endometrioma is is the cystectomy the treatment of endometrioma is always the cystectomy okay and for the uh, infertility we have to do again the cystectomy no medical management no cyst ablation no ind no cyst aspiration nothing acts on the nothing acts on the uh, endometrioma okay nothing and the only one and one it has been a pyq two times in your exam do bar pyq aaya hai theek hai endometrioma yani chocolate cyst ke andar the only the treatment is cystectomy okay even if it is uh, asymptomatic even if it is asymptomatic and more than 5 cm you have to do the cystectomy no other surgery no medical management Whereas if the in the endometriosis, if it is mild, then we have to do clomiphene citrate and IUI for the three cycles. If it doesn't act, then IVF. And in the in the severe endometriosis, we have always to do the IVF. We have always to do the IVF. Okay, this is the ground glass appearance. In the ground glass appearance, we will always do the cystectomy. Its treatment was asked. in the endometriosis this is endometriosis powder burnt appearance powder burnt appearance and we will always do ivf in this condition right when fibroids are there so less than 40 years the treatment of the fibroids is of course the medical management medical management karenge kyunki less than 40 years pe जो है हम यूट्रस नहीं निकाल सकते वी कैन नॉट रिमूव द यूट्रस एंड आफ्टर बिकॉज एडिनोमायोसिस हैपन्स आफ्टर द फोर्टी ईयर्स द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ एडिनोमायोसिस इज ऑलवेज द 
hysterectomy the treatment of adenomyosis is always the hysterectomy even if the fibroid case is coming to you after 40 years its treatment will be hysterectomy okay so these are some characteristic appearance uh, characteristic appearance this is venetian blind this is venetian blinds right and this is the large endometrial myometrial junction which is a characteristic endomyometrial junction which is the characteristic appearance of the adenomyosis adenomyosis mein kya ho raha hai myometrium is going in the endometrium is going in the uh, endometrium is going in the myometrium to wahan se endometrium jab shed hoti hai to is tarah se legs ban jati hai so here are the legs and this gives the appearance of the uh, of the curtains uh, of the curtains so that is why we are naming is that venetian blinds what are these legs these legs are the endometrium bleeding inside the myometrium okay right what is the treatment of uh, fibroid if it is asymptomatic we have to give no treatment students if it is symptomatic then some mucosal fibroid like the chocolate cells has only one treatment hysteroscopic myomectomy so we have only one treatment for the fibroid that is the hysteroscopic myomectomy okay and if it is intramural or, or subserosal then medical management can act and the first line is ocp second line is gnrh and the last but not the least is the surgery if it is family is not complete then we will do only and only myomectomy that is removal of fibroid and if the family is complete we can do hysterectomy and the high five procedure hifu and uterine artery embolization so please note here hifu and uh, uterine artery embolization they are only to be done if family is complete this is one of the expected question which we are expecting thing in your exam hifu and uterine artery embolization are to be done only if family is complete in a similar way as we do the hysterectomy because after that the endometrium never never proliferates okay hysteroscopy we need a we need a watery media because it is uh, in the hysteroscopy we have to dilate the myometrium in the laparoscopy we have to uh, it is dilate we have to distend only the uh, only the uh, peritoneum so peritoneum is very easy to get dilate so for the laparoscopy we use only the gaseous media okay distension media is fluid in the hysteroscopy it can be ns rl or gc right if it is a bipolar cautery then the distension media is ionic media ns and rl because it is more good it is isotonic it is isotonic okay if the uh, it laparoscopy because we have to descend only the peritoneum it is gas and the gas is co2 the pressure is 10 to 50 whereas here the pressure is 10 times more 100 because we have to uh, make it distended the myometrium so which needs increase pressure right the endometrial cavity what by which procedures we do hysteros by hysteroscopy ye ek pyq tha hysteroscopy se aap kya kya kar sakte ho all the endometrial cavity procedures jo hai we will be doing with hysteroscopy so what are those procedures hysteroscopy septoplasty and the ashenman syndrome hysteroscopy moreover sub mucosal fibroid this is also removed so this is one of the pyq again what we are expecting in your exam ठीक है सब म्यूकोजल फाइब्रॉइड को एंडोमेट्रियल कैविटी से ही अप्रोच कर सकते हैं एंडोमेट्रियल कैविटी से ही अप्रोच कर सकते हैं सो प्लीज स्टूडेंट सब म्यूकोजल फाइब्रॉइड के लिए आप हिस्टेरोस्कोपिक माइमेक्टमी लिख के आओगे यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू राइट लेप्रोस्कोपी बाई लेप्रोस्कोपी वी कैन अप्रोच द द इंट्राम्यूरल एंड द सबसेरोजल फाइब्रॉइड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पी वाई क्यू फॉर योर ऑफ योर एफ एम जी ठीक है even the tubal ligation can be done by laparoscopy okay so as i already told you if there is a bipolar cautery then if there is a mono uh, bipolar cautery then normal saline and ringer lactate are the media 
and their alert line is 1500 ml and 2 liter we need to uh, stop the surgery 2500 we need to stop the surgery whereas uh, the if we are using the monopolar cautery then we need to use the non-ionic media that is the glycine and the sorbitol at 500 ml we have to alert and the 1 liter we have to stop the surgery these are very very important because if we will not be precautious on these figures then our patient can die due to the pulmonary edema pulmonary edema is the uh, fluid overload fluid overload condition which was asked in your exam pulmonary edema okay pulmonary edema is a fluid overload condition okay fibroid degeneration you just need to remember that the most common degeneration is hyaline and the red degeneration it occurs in pregnancy and specifically it occurs in second trimester they will ask you in which trimester it occurs it occurs in second trimester and the treatment is always conservative the treatment is always conservative patient has lot of pain patient has lot of pain and but the treatment is always and always conservative my dear students okay so this is the fibroid picture this is the fibroid picture which they will be giving you so they are small space occupying lesion over the uterus over the uterus okay this is a laparoscopic image this is the picture any fibroid which is touching the mucosa is submucosal any fibroid which is touching the endometrium is submucosal okay the fibroid which is touching the serosa is is serosal the fibroid which is totally inside the myometrium this wala is intramural is intramural okay this is a picture of adenomyosis you can see here there are cysts in the myometrium so when there is cyst or endometrium in the myometrium so it is adenomyosis and here the uterus is enlarged you can see there are there is much much more myometrium as expected so this is a picture of adenomyosis okay in the pcos there is no ovulation because there is no ovulation there is no corpus luteum and there is no progesterone so the and uh, the proliferative phase it keeps on prolonged if the proliferative phase will get prolonged then there will be then the uh, lh will increase and there will be increase lh will cause increase androgens and there will be hirsutism okay because in the pcos there is no corpus luteum there is no progesterone no progesterone causes increase lh and increase lh causes the increase androgens or you can say theca cell hypertrophy so rotterdam dam gives the criteria for diagnosing the for diagnosing the uh, pcos the criteria contains hyperandrogenism hyperandrogenism it can be biochemical that is androgens are more when they are done uh, tested in the biochemical lab or clinical criteria or clinical criteria that is you are seeing hirsutism, clitoromegaly and worsening of uh, worsening of voice okay and ovulation or oligomenorrhea you all know if the cycles are regular it itself means that the periods are uh, if the ovulation is occurring and if they are irregular it means that there or uh, there is oligomenorrhea it means that there is no secretory phase okay the ultrasound appearance you have to just learn the figure of 10 more than 10 follicles less than 10 mm follicles what is pcos small multiple follicle how much follicles more than 10 follicles how much small less than 10 mm and the ovarian volume is more than 10 mm mm cube ovarian volume gets increased the first and the firmest first and the foremost what thing they have been asking you and they you should know the first thing in any case whether hirsutism infertility or oligomenorrhea the first treatment in any case is always and always with lifestyle modification 
okay for the oligomenorrhea the drug of choice is ocp and for the hirsutism again it is ocp for the anovulation it is leftrozone if the patient is not recovering with ovul uh, ovulatory drug that is leftrozole clomiphil and dnrh so one of the treatment is laparoscopic ovarian drilling but it is only for the infertility otherwise it will not help us what is infertility the person is not consuming after 1 years of unprotected in intercourse okay if the if the couple is not consuming after 1 years semen analysis you all know this parameters that the semen volume should be at least 1.5 ml the sperm count should be 40 million and if the sperm concentration is asked then it is 50 million per ml that is what it is asked a niche wala tino parameters will be asked in your there that is sperm concentration motility should be 40% and sperm morphology it should be at least 4% these three are very very important now if the azoospermia is occurring in uh, if the report is saying azoospermia that is zero sperm zero sperm is there on the uh, report of semen analysis the causes can be pre testicular that is hypothalamus pituitary they are not working or the testicular causes that is testes they are not working okay or there can be post testicular that is obstructive azoospermia the sperms are being produced but they are not coming out right so here if it, it is pre testicular that is the uh, hypothalamus and pituitary is not working then it will be lh fsh will be decreased lh fsh will be decreased in the testicular due to the negative feedback loss of the negative feedback lh fsh will increase okay whereas in the post testicular which is obstructive azoospermia there will be the lh and fsh will be normal good afternoon kavita the lh and fsh will be normal okay the treatment of the pre testicular that is where the hypothalamus and pituitary are at fault the treatment is pulsatile gnrh whereas when the testicular failure is there then the treatment is tse and ixi that is what is expected this time in the question that will ask you to, that will be asked to you who oh, the pyq it is a pyq and it is also expected also If it is a testicular failure, यानी गुनाज testes काम नहीं कर रही हैं, then what is the treatment you will give? Okay, the एक आधा sperm तो बन ही रहा होगा, ठीक है? One one or more sperms will be getting formed. So in that condition, we have to do test say, we have to extract that one sperm, and we are, then we have to do the ICSI. Okay, ultrasound. Surgical repair and good prognosis is also the uh, is the treatment in the case of the post testicular that is vas deferens obstruction. So if all the hormones are normal, it means it is a vas deferens obstruction, and in that case you have to do the uh, ultrasound and get that obstruction removed. Okay, the uh, factors which are for the female factor in fertility are ovarian and the tubal. For the ovarian factor, the most common cause is the anovulation. Ovulation does not occurs, and to check whether ovulation is occurring or not, this is the first step in the female infertility. So the first factor you you check for the female infertility is the checking the ovulation, and how you check ovulation is. by presence of progesterone if progesterone is present then of course the corpus luteum was formed and the ovulation has occurred so single most reliable test please don't don't take in the exam lh lh is by increase lh we don't check the uh, we don't check the ovulation because increase in lh is for a very small duration right and the progesterone is increased for 14 days we can effectively check the ovulation presence by progesterone or the its effect okay so progesterone is checked on 21 day 
we the other effects of progesterone are increase in the basal body temperature endometrial biopsy which causes the secretory changes the endometrial biopsy which causes the secretory changes and that this biopsy is done in the post ovulation phase that is what we are expecting will come in your exam that when is the endometrial biopsy done because all the tests are done in the proliferative phase or in the follicular phase okay but only there is the one test which is done in the or uh, uh, in the post ovulatory phase or pre menstrual phase that is the endometrial biopsy because here we have to see the secretory changes so we have to do in the secretory phase right so progesterone makes the cervical mucus thick thick and on the vaginal cytology we see the intermediate cell is, is, and we can also monitor the ovarian follicle by the ultrasound a full full grown graphian follicle has a size of 18 to 20 Uh, mm so that is what is asked in your exam and you people always get forget so i will i'm um, also putting the black star here okay 18 to 20 mm is the size of the mature ovarian follicle is the size of the mature ovarian follicle and ovulation the most common cause of an ovulation is pcos okay the drug of choice for pcos ovulation is letrozole why clomiphen was replaced okay kavita are you there so this is one of the important drugs which are asked in your exam okay letrozole and clomiphen letrozole and clomiphen this is one of the important drug of uh, uh, that is asked in your exam the in the letrozole the mechanism of action is is aromatase inhibitor and in the clomiphene the mechanism of action is antagonist of estrogen at the hypothalamus it acts as a antagonist of estrogen as a, a hypothalamus so basically this is anti letrozole is anti aromatase and this is anti estrogen and because of their both of their action they increase the fsh increase the fsh because clomiphene is anti estrogen so it is antagonist at endometrium also if any drug is antagonist at endometrium to so, oh, endometrium grow nahi karegi aur endometrium ka jo hai wo endometrium grow nahi karegi और वहाँ पे बच्चे का जायगॉड का इम्प्लांटेशन नहीं हो पाएगा ऐसा कोई भी प्रॉब्लम यहाँ पे नहीं आता एंड दैट इज़ व्हाई इट इज़ द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस दैट इज़ व्हाई इट इज़ द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस दैट इज़ व्हाई इट इज़ ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस व्हाई इट इज़ ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस लेट्रोजोल बिकॉज द लेट्रोजोल डज नॉट एक्ट ऑन द एंडोमेट्रियम वी आर आज क्रोमोफिन एक्ट एंड इट decreases the endometrium thickness so it is very difficult for the zygote to implant so this is a picture of so uh, uh, this is a picture of ohss and here you can see the cause of ohss is injection hcg which is given to the infertility patient which is given to the infertility patient the patient who are undergoing ovulation inductions Uns, uh, they have this problem. Okay, so spermatogenesis occurs in the puberty. Spermatogenesis is is formation of sperms, and oogenesis is formation of ovum. Oogenesis is formation of ovum. Okay, in the spermatogenesis, the sperms they are formed from spermatogonia. Yeah, spermatogonia forms the primary spermatocyte, and then secondary spermatocyte and spermatid as well. The maturation of the sperms occurring. Come on, everybody! The maturation of the sperm or the motility. M M wala sab kuch occurs in the epididymis, whereas the capacitation capacitation occurs in the female genital tract. Okay, the capacitation occurs in the female genital tract or the Fallopian tube and cervix. Is it okay? For capacitation occurs in the female genital tract or the fallopian tube. Maturation and motility occurs in the uh, 
akka zinda come on everybody speak out with me write down in the chat box in the happy that was okay so o genesis or the formation of ovum occurs in the intrauterine life the first arrest occurs in the first arrest in the o genesis occur in the prophase 1 and it is opened by ovulation it is opened by ovulation and the second arrest occur in the metaphase 1 and it is opened up by the fertilization okay so oh, the first arrest occurs by the in the pro phase one and it is opened up by the ovulation okay Ov during the ovulation it is open and where as the second arrest of the meiotic division occurs in the meta phase 2 it is meta phase 2 and is open just before the just before the uh, fertilization okay and and uh, the ovum are in the follicle maximum number of the uh, ovum or primordial follicles are 20 weeks is, is the 7 million and the number of follicles at birth is 2 million and the number of follicles at puberty is 5 lakh you can have very easily remember 7 million 2 million 7 minus 2 is 5 5 lakh okay so it is very simple so maximum number of the uh, follicles they are at 20 weeks in the intrauterine life of the female female that is the uh, 7 million and at the birth it is 2 million at that the puberty it is 5 lakh okay measurement of the ovarian reserve is best done by amh amh is a glycoprotein amh is a glycoprotein and it can be done on any day it can be done in the any day we can do do it on the any day the enter follicular count is the test which is done only on the day 3 uh, only on the day 3 so the best is amh and the second best is the enter follicular count okay tubal factor in fertility here we have to see that the tubes are patent or not the investigation of the choice for tubal patency is hcg and we check the uh, uh, patency by leach wilkinson cannula which is a pencil like cannula leach wilkinson cannula okay it is done in the post menstrual uh, uh, phase that is day 10 okay as i told you all the tests they are done in the day 10 okay uh, day 10 around day 10 except the endometrial biopsy okay so this is what we are expecting question from the um, from the gynae or infertility section that if there is bilateral tubal blockage if there is bilateral tubal blockage on hcg if there is bilateral tubal blockage on hcg what is your next step so next step is hysteroscopy okay next step is hysteroscopy because hcg is a screening test hsg is a screening test the both the cornuas are they have the sphincters at their end so out of the pain which is caused by hsg they uh, the the cornual sphincters they get close and there is lot of pain okay and there is lot and lot of pain okay this is a picture of fimbrial block the in which there is fimbrias are seen this is a picture of fimbrial block and in which there is no fallopian tube is seen that is a cornual block okay cornual block is also known as proximal block and fimbrial block is also known as distal block okay so if on the hsg there is coming cornual block we need to do the hystero laparoscopy followed by bilateral chemo perturbation in bilateral chemo perturbation the dye which we are using is methylene blue the dye in the <clears throat> the dye which we are using in the <clears throat> 
the dye which we are using in the HSG is a radioactive or radio sensitive dye okay uh, because in the HSG we take x-ray let us study the physiological vaginal discharge a large number of questions are being asked on physiological vaginal discharge and that is what we are expecting tomorrow in your exam till they say you till they say you no smell and no itching please it is a physiological vaginal discharge it is the physiological vaginal discharge the infective discharges they always either they have smell or they have itching or you can say pruritus till they are saying you that it is not having smell and not having the itching it means that the discharge is physiological the physiological discharge is mainly due to the estrogen and it is cyclical the other characteristic features are that it is due to the estrogen because estrogen makes the cervical mucus thin and the, th the thinness of the mucus is only in the, the pre-ovulatory phase okay so it is cyclical every time there is a pre-ovulatory phase there is the thinning of the cervical mucus okay it is present whenever the estrogen is present in the body it is present in the newborn puberty reproductive age and pregnancy okay it is present in the newborn it is present in the newborn under the effect of the mother's estrogen okay for some days only it is present it is also present in the puberty it is also present in the reproductive age because estrogens are present and it is also present in the pregnancy rather it is excessively present because of the increased estrogen in the pregnancy okay but it is absent in it is absent in prepubertal girls and the menopausal girl let us study the genital infection here you can note that there is curdy discharge here you can note that there is curdy discharge and these are the hyphase which are there in the uh, slide saline microscopy this is candida and and this this is the only infection which occurs on the acidic ph this is the only infection which occurs in the acidic ph otherwise all the infections the bacteria and the protozoa infections all the infections they occur in the alkaline ph very good the for the uh, vaginitis we give the kit two for the vaginitis we give the kit two which is a green color kit vaginitis is not a serious problem that is why its color is green okay kit number one is referred for the males kit number uh, one, kit number one is given to the uh, male okay so it is a fluconazole it is a fluconazole okay now this is the green discharge which is occurring in the uh, trichomoniasis infection and here there is strawberry cervix because the uh, because the uh, because the uh, uh, protozoa trichomoniasis it has the flagella so it bites and uh, it bites or you can say it creates inflammation at one spot and then goes at the another spot okay there is uh, the because there is not a lot of inflammation that is why the discharge is green in color the inflammatory proteins in yeah the inflammatory proteins uh, wo green color kar dete hain white color ke discharge ko bachche green color kar dete hain frothy theek hai dhuaan dhuaan aa jata hai and there is lot of pruritus and fishy smell you all know proteins are fishy in smell nothing new in that okay this is a std because it is a std trichomoniasis is a std that is why in the we also treat the partner here also because it is vaginitis for the vaginitis we give the kit too which is the green color kit because vaginitis is not a serious problem and if we have to give a single drug then we give the metronida zone this is the flagellated organism um trichomoniasis so all these images are asked because why the genital infection is very important because 70 percent of the females on the gynae opd they have the complaints of the of the discharge 
okay now if the discharge is uh, simple white in color but their foul smell is present then of course that is a uh, discharge of bacterial vaginosis that is a discharge of bacterial vaginosis or gardnerella or gardnerella is an organism it causes no inflammation it causes no inflammation no pruritus it causes no inflammation and no pruritus bache okay the discharge is gray white in color because there is no inflammation only there is bad smell and bad smell can be present at bad smell can be present in a female due to the uh, lack of hygiene so uh, we need a clue and the cells by which we realize is is the uh, clue cells what are the clue cells a pyq is expected here from all of you here the pyq is expected what is the clue cells the clue cells are the vaginal epithelial cells which are super loaded with gardnerella vaginal epithelial cells ke upar bhar bhar ke gardnerella chipka hua hai so the word is gardnerella adhere to the vaginal epithelial cells so mind it the clue cell is not the gardnerella garden clue cell is the vaginal epithelial cells which has adhered gardnerella over it okay so adhere word and vaginal epithelial cell is very important right here also because it is a vaginal discharge we give kit 2 which is green in color and the specific drug is metronidazole okay so cervicitis there are two organisms which cause the cervicitis but the thing which they are want to ask you in in addition to the vaginal discharge see i always tell you patient does not know the discharge is coming from vagina or cervix patient will always say you the the discharge is coming from vagina right for the patient doesn't know it is vaginal discharge or cervicitis discharge ठीक है पेशेंट कैन टेल प्रोराइटिस इज प्रेजेंट और नॉट पेशेंट कैन टेल स्मेल इज प्रेजेंट और नॉट बट पेशेंट कैन नॉट टेल दैट द डिस्चार्ज इज फ्रॉम वेजाइना और फ्रॉम द सर्विस राइट सो द अदर कंप्लेन विच आर विच आर प्रेजेंट आर इंटर मैंसुरल ब्लीडिंग एंड पोस्ट क्वार्टर ब्लीडिंग ड्यू टू द और सर्विक्स हाइपरट्रॉफी वेन देयर इज सर्विक्स हाइपरट्रॉफी द अदर कंप्लेन विच आर प्रेजेंट आर आर द in uh, the post coital bleeding and the intermenstrual bleeding okay same symptoms that is seen in the ca cervix right so on the ps you can see the cervix erosion the kit which we gave for the treatment is the uh, kit 1 on gray cephixin or azithromycin okay gray color cephixin and azithromycin okay next is the pid in pid the patient complains of lower abdominal pain along with the vaginal discharge the patient will complain of lower abdominal pain and in the pid all the feature of tenderness are present because once the infection has gone to the uterus and to the fallopian tube of course there will be lot of tenderness so how you will differentiate the endometriosis tenderness with the pid tenderness by simple one symptom cervical motion tenderness cervical motion tenderness is cervical motion tender tenderness is given then it is a case of the pid okay it means it is a cervicitis which is going to the endometrium and which is going to the salpingitis okay because i al always tell you that it is not possible for the endometriosis and for all the adhesion problems to be seen by ultrasound so investigation of choice is laparoscopy pus from the fimbria can easily be seen whole of the time there is pus the two complications which are asked are the of the pid is pyometra and the infertility the kit is green, uh, yellow in color it is a kit 6 because as compared to the vaginitis pid is something very very uh, very very big problem so it is yellow in color and there is mild lower pain abdomen so it is not Uh, as painful as herpes so we are not giving it a red color we are giving it a yellow color and it is kit 6 and it contains doxy metro and cefixin genital tb the most common on organ which is involved in the genital tb is the fallopian tube 
the most common organ which is involved in the uh, genital tb is the fallopian tube this is the pyq okay and here the most common site is ampulla here the most common site is ampulla the pulmonary tb is the source of infection uh, uh, the source which is due to which the uh, tubes are getting infecting is the pulmonary tb sometime in the past and the spread is hematogenous spread is hematogenous so this is prolapsed uterus so if this prolapsed uterus is present in the nulliparous lady you are not going to do any surgery you are just going to do the sling surgery schrodinger syringe operation okay <clears throat> if the a woman's age is less than 40 years and there is the family is complete someone like me family is complete less than 40 years then you have to do the manchester and father gill operation which mainly contains of cervix amputation names are as and you can easily learn they have their family is complete yani wo mother father ban gaye jitno ka banna tha okay more than 40 years and prolapse if the patient is age is more than 40 years plus prolapse is present present of course now you can remove the uterus so the operation which is removing the uterus which are anal hysterectomy plus pelvic floor repair is known as ward mayo ward mayo is moody ma prit ma okay ward prolapse ward prolapse is after the surgery or removal of the uterus the the leftover part of the vagina it is also it is also uh, coming down it is coming down in that case you have to fix with the sacrum or the ligaments because uterus has been removed now we have to fix it to some strong ligament or bone and all it will be with the sacrum sacrum fixation sacrospinous fixation utero sacral fixation for the anterior seal the surgeries which are doing anterior anterior seal is upper posterior vaginal wall we are doing the moschewitz and the halvein procedure you all know anterior seal contains stools so there is a smell and for the bad smell the name is moschewitz halvein so stools are something wherever there are stools they creates a hell hell bana diya a stools de smell de okay stress incontinence is the surgery for the stress incontinence what is stress incontinence if urine comes out of the urethra on laughing it is very bad experience so it is bruch in hindi we say bad to bura and bruch call for suspension okay and that is urethral slings we put okay for the vvf we do after 3 months of the delivery we do let's go operation we do it after a long time that is why they are known as let's go operation as per as supports of uterus are concerned the main support is always levator and i and if they give you this diagram and tell you to label which is levator and i this one is the levator and i the one which is going diagonally the one which is going diagonally this one is the levator anal okay the one which is in the mid and going diagonally is the levator anal the ligament supports are the triradiate ligament which spread with the uh, which spread from the cervix right the ligaments which go transverse are the mecanodes the ligaments which go posteriorly are the uterosacral and the ligaments which go anteriorly are the are the pubo cervical ligaments okay the angle of anti flexion what is angle of anti flexion the angle of anti flexion is the angle between the cervix and uterus of course it is very small uh, it is a very large angle because it just flexes the uterus a slight just slightly bend it so it is made by the round ligament who is making this uh, uh, angle it is a round ligament minor cooperation is also given by the uterosacral or the virgin ligament okay the angle of anti virgin is a very large angle that is 90 degree and it is between the v for virgin and v for vagina the angle between the cervix and vagina 
the uterosacral ligament they push the vagina posteriorly and an angle of 90 degree is made okay the round ligament is a secondary support and the broad ligament gives no support and the broad ligament gives no support okay as far as contraception is concerned they will be asking you about the lark what are lark lark means the one which act very long okay they act long acting the one which are for very long at least they have to be taken once a month at least they have they act for once a month at least once taken they act for a month so mainly Lark, the question is expected on the lark. Lark means that they are long acting, long acting. Once taken, once taken, they act for month, they act for month because nobody is free to take the contraceptive daily. Once taken, they act for month and moreover, they are reversible. They are reversible, they are not the sterilization procedure. So sterilization is a permanent procedure. So the sterilization procedures, they are not included in LARC. That is why it, they, uh, they, uh, LARC is not included in the, uh, LARC is not included in the, uh, sterilization is not included in the LARC. The LARC mainly contains copper tea, progesterone, implants, and uh, Mirena, all these things, okay. Property contraindication is India's top ABCD. India stands for infection. The, but the infection, it should be active and it should involve the uterus. Active PID and active puerperal sepsis. Okay. Top stand for the trophoblastic diseases. Because in the trophoblastic diseases, the molar pregnancy, the uterus is very soft. So if we are putting the property, it will perforate. So it is contraindicated. A is anomalies of the uterus, distorting its anatomy. Okay. B is bleeding, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, because undiagnosed vaginal bleeding means cancers. So we are not going to put over there. C is stand for cancer cervix and cancer endometrium. D stand for diabetes with vasculopathy. Okay. What is the mechanism of action? Copper or makes the sperm toxic and it inhibits the fertilization. And the T structure, it is act as a foreign body and it inhibits the implantation. Only one place where you will say ovulation is not affected is copper T. In the copper tea, ovulation is not at all affected. Okay, COCPs, they are, uh, the COCPs, they contain estrogen and progesterone both. This, these COCPs, they act on, go and act on hypothalamus. Must, they bind to the estrogen progesterone receptors and thereby suppresses the GnRH release and they suppresses the HPO axis. When they will suppress the HPO axis, then there will be no release of the FSH and LH. When there is no release of FSH and LH, there is, is inhibition of ovulation. Okay, inhibition of ovulation. So body own HPO axis has stopped off. So main mechanism is inhibition of ovulation. Okay, so but the the estrogen and progesterone which the patient is taking, which orally via the pills, will not only act on the hypothalamus, will also act on the uterus and the other organs. And now when it will act on the uterus, the progesterone action will dominate because estrogen in OCP is very less as compared to the natural estrogen, and this is the crux of the of the main concept of the contraception estrogen in ocp is very less as compared to the natural estrogen which has been stopped 
and that is why the OCP pills they have lot and lot of benefits because we study in the uh, the all the problems of the gynae are hyper estrogenic condition fibroids endometriosis adenomyosis these all are the hyper estrogenic phase phase so uh, the mechanism of action so they are helpful in all of this okay so when they will this uh, the progesterone action will dominate because estrogen is very less so when this estrogen will act on the endometrium the it will be cause inhibition of implantation because the progesterone because the progesterone causes a less growth of the endometrium and will make the cervical mucus thick and fallopian tube motility will also decrease okay so we how we advise this we advise this uh, in a day of 21 days and 7 days break 21 days the patient takes the pills and then takes the 7 days break okay we start this pills on day 1 to day 5 we start this pill on day 1 to day 5 okay if the pills are missed for 2 days it is okay take whenever one remembers the pill if the if the patient has missed more than two pills then it is very pathetic okay then we have to take the emergency contraception and for seven days the other contraceptive matters okay if the pills have been missed more than two days okay more than two is three or four days then we have to take the emergency contraceptive pills and seven days contraception for the next seven days barrier contraception okay other mode of contraception or you can say barrier contraception what are the contraindication of the uh, coc uh, cocps the answer is liver tlc the liver acute or active diseases is the contraindication t stand for the thrombophilic condition the thrombo thrombus forming tendencies l stand for lactation only up till 6 months and c stands for the ca breast okay ca breast breast the thrombus forming conditions what are the thrombus forming condition the, as the virtual triad says us the thrombus forming conditions are those those in which there is endothelium damage the endothelium is damaged in hypertensive diabetes mellitus migraine and smoking the endothelium is damaged in hypertensive diabetes mellitus with vasculopathy hypertension 160 by 100 more than that migraine with aura and smoking the patient should be a main smoker smoking more than 15 to 18 cigarettes and age should be more than 35 okay and if there is stasis stasis is seen in the heart and brain diseases so if the patient is having any heart and brain diseases please don't uh, start the uh, ocp pills patient will die of thrombus hypercoagulability problem is seen in the postpartum phase pvt and thrombophilia what are the non-contraceptive benefits as I already told you that yeah in the lactation and one can take COCP pills but if the uh, Kavita if they ask you just after placenta removal then you will you are going to see just after placenta property is preferred okay post placental property is preferred in general they ask you in lactation you will say progesterone only pills okay so due to decrease estrogen and the ovary hyperestrogenic conditions can be solved which are ovarian cysts and ovarian cancer they are protected uterus hyperestrogenic conditions are solved endometriosis fibroid adenomyosis pcos and endometrial cancer risk okay the breast it increases the breast hyperestrogenic condition that is the benign breast diseases fibroadenosis because there is no ovulation if there is no ovulation then there is dysmenorrhea okay so it is best for the married and the unmarried nulliparous couples okay progesterone only pills they are not of choice in any condition 
because progesterone only contraception whether it is merena whether it is any other injection deport medroxy progesterone uh, injection or progesterone only pills they are not liked by the patient because they cause irregular bleeding they are in irregular bleeding that is something which is not acceptable by the patients by the females at all okay they are not or not affected they cause irregular bleeding but they slowly slowly they uh, decrease the menstrual fluid so menorrhagia they are also the treatment of menorrhagia and then this given in the it is given in the endometriosis and fibroids also uh, melena is given in the endometriosis and fibroids also okay contraindications of progesterone only contraceptions are if already there is any irregular or unexplained bleeding breast cancer and active liver disease okay emergency contraception which is the most preferred and over the counter available drug over the counter means which can be uh, given which can be given uh, uh, without doctor prescription and they are available within seven uh, they, uh, the uh, the measures which can be taken within 72 hours or 3 days of the unprotected intercourse the measures are high dose high dose progesterone on levonorgestrel you have to learn this dose 1.5 mg it comes by the name e pill i pill and unwanted 72 high dose estrogen can also be used but we are not preferring it because the high dose estrogen pills they causes lot and lot of vomiting because they cause lot and lot of vomiting so we are not preferring it ugp regimen ugp scientist doctor said that uh, the uh, estrogen and progesterone and both can be taken let us take the pills also the ugp regimen take uh, UHP scientists say, said that take 50 microgram estrogen and 250 microgram progesterone, two tablets at a gap of 12 hours. Uh, its advantage is it is free of cost. For this mifepristone, mifepristone is dose is 10 to 5 mg, 50 mg, and it is not approved by the India. So mainly the preferred thing which we are taking in India is a uh, uh, progesterone. Or for any unprotected intercourse, levonorgestrel 1.5 mg within 72 hours. If 72 hours have passed and the patient wants to take it up till 5 days, then the uh, device which we can give is for the multi paras. Multi paras or for the patients who have one child is property. Property, please, Merena cannot be given. Merena cannot be given. Danazol cannot be given. Progesterone only. Pills cannot be given. Danazol cannot be given. Merena. These three things are the those things which cannot be. And mesoprost is not a emergency contraception. Mesoprost is not a emergency contraception. It is a abortifacient. Okay. Any copper tea we can use, but it should contain copper, okay? Right, and it can be used up till uh, 5 days of the unprotected intercourse. It is most effective emergency contraception method. If the patient is nulliparous, then we cannot put the copper tea. We, uh, the patients don't prefer the copper tea. Then we will put the hormonal ulipristal selective progesterone receptor modulator. So selective progesterone receptor modulator uniprestan which doses 30 mg once asked in your exam and it can be given given up till 5 days okay permanent method of sterilization is the tubectomy in the tubectomy we are uh, ligating the site isthmus only woman consent is required postpartum we can only ligate it up till 7 days and we have to do it by mini laparotomy because the cardiac output is still high and when the cardiac output is high we cannot give the general anesthesia required for the laparoscopy procedures okay Modi uh, modified pomeroy is the method right 
and the inter once if it is not done in the post part of phase then we have to do the interval ligation that is after 6 weeks of the delivery right so this is the pomeroy method and this is the uh, this is the instrument and by which we do laparoscopic sterilization Okay, it is fellop ring applicator. Here you can see there is the fellop ring located at the one. Okay, vasectomy. As I told you, for the vasectomy, you have to uh, learn that the technique which we are following is non scalpel vasectomy. As compared to the tubectomy, its failure rate is very less. And for the vasectomy, immediate sterilization or immediate Immediate azoospermia is not achieved. It takes 3 months or 20 ejaculation. Okay, for that period, patient has to use the condoms. Okay? And sterility should be confirmed by semen analysis report after 3 months. Barrier contraceptive. So these are a lot of barrier contraceptive methods. Okay, You know that they contain nanoxinol 9 which is a spermicidal gel. The natural method of contraception is the billing method where Patient identifies its cervical mucus is thin, is stretchable, and the patient will not intercourse in that days and the coming three to four days. So billing method is patient identifies that the cervical mucus is very thin. And the rhythm method is the behavioral method that patient does not uh, intercourse for day 11 to day 16. Okay, calendar method or the behavioral method. Okay. So as far as the uh, oncology is concerned, HPV L1 gene is used for making the capsid protein, right? And it's E6, E7 are responsible for the malignant transformation, okay? The high risk types are the uh, 16 and 18 and the low risk types are the 6 and 11. High risk type causes cancer and the low risk type causes warts and laryngeal papillomatosis. Right? HPV vaccine is the Gardasil 9, which is a non avalent vaccine. It doses is, or will we will be also studying its doses. The, uh, the 9 vaccines which we, have, which we have to use is 6, 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. These are the non avalent vaccines vaccines and and the uh, ideal age is 11 to 22 years uh, but they can be given up to 9 to 26 years less than 21 years as uh, one or two doses are sufficient because one dose gives the 95 percent protection and two doses gives the 100 percent protection so they take, they say that either take one or two it depends on you okay and more than 22 years as two doses are to be given and the age up till vaccine can be given is 9 to 26 years okay next is screening of cancers screening of cancer is as per who should be done up till 30 to 50 years acog says that it can be done up till 21 to 65 years okay hpv via and pep are the three methods by which we can do hpv is the most good method then the via and then the pep and the uh, uh, the via is the most cost effective method visual inspection of acetic acid hpv is repeated after five years and via and pep methods they are repeated after every Three years. HPV is repeated after five years, and via and PAP are something that are repeated after every every uh, the three years. Okay, three years. If the PAP smear comes positive, then we have to go for the leap and Lelet's procedure, or or after colposcopy, after colposcopy. So after colposcopy biopsy, after the diagnostic test, we have to go through this process. Okay. Right. So these, these are the instruments which we can use for the uh, 
which we we can use for the uh, pap smear this is coplin jar it can start with k it can start with c it is coplin jar this is air spatula this is coscos coscos speculum because it is self retaining so we use it in the opd right whenever the pap smear is suspicious we have to go for the colposcopy biopsy otherwise we we are we are not going to go for the colposcopy biopsy if there is ascus report in there or if there is uh, if there is lsil or agus ascus is a typical squamous cell of undetermined significance lsil is no squamous intraepithelial lesions and agus is atypical glandular cells in all these three abnormal reports we will not be going with the colposcopy biopsy otherwise whenever whenever there is affected uh, there is abnormal pap smear report we will be going with the colposcopy biopsy right CA cervix happens at the two age 30 plus and 50 plus the most common symptom which you always do wrong is is abnormal vaginal bleeding please it is not post coital bleeding it is abnormal boy vaginal bleeding most common specific symptom is a post coital bleeding if the patient of post coital bleeding comes to you please see its cervix is cervix is healthy go for pap smear is cervix is not healthy go for the colposcopy biopsy i repeat if the cervix is healthy go for the pap smear and if the cervix is not healthy go for the colposcopy biopsy okay the risk factor is for the hpv or for the ca cervix is hpv and sexual activity and all those factors which are decreasing the immunity all those factors which are decreasing the immunity okay stage 1 is involvement of the cervix if stage 1 a is there and it is not visible by eye and in the yes we can do it we can do it kavita okay stage 1 cervix is yeah cervix erosion means cervix is not healthy okay stage 1 is 1a is not visible by eye now stage uh, 1b is visible by eye okay stage 2 is involvement of parametrium and stage 2a is involvement of vagina okay stage 2a is involvement of vagina uh, and stage 2b is parametrium i always tell you agar ca cervix ki staging yaad karni hai to aise vagina banao aur aise cervix banao theek hai ek circle banao jo circle ke andar hai agar cervix involved hai to it is stage 1 jo circle ke andar hai wo hai 2 it is stage 2 so upper vagina is 2a and parametrium is 2b aur jo bahar hai this vagina which is this is 3a aur pelvic wall tak hai 3b okay pelvic wall tak hai 3 theek hai so uh, that's it the treatment was asked in your last exam so we are hoping ki treatment is bar bhi pucha jayega ठीक है द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वन ए वन इज इज सिंपल हिस्ट्रिक्टी ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वन ए वन इज सिंपल हिस्ट्रिक्टी और इफ द फैमिली इज नॉट कंप्लीट देन कोनाइजेशन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ वन ए टू इज मॉडिफाइड टाइप टू और मॉडिफाइड रेडिकल और बर्दाइंस हिस्ट्रिक्टी ओके ए दैट इज अलॉन्ग विद नेपैथी फॉर वन बी वन एंड वन बी टू दैट वॉज यूर पी वाई क्यू we do the type 3 that is the radical hysterectomy 1a1 ke liye hum karenge simple 1a2 ke liye hum karenge modified radical ya vardhans 
ठीक है और वन बी वन और वन बी टू के लिए करेंगे हम हम रेडिकल हिस्ट्री ठीक है वन बी टू के बाद हर प्रोसीजर के लिए हम करेंगे कीमो रेडिएशन प्लीज रिमेंबर ओनली रेडियोथेरेपी इज नॉट गिवन इन द पेशेंट्स ऑफ ऑफ सी एस सर्विक्स कीमो रेडिएशन इज गिवन कीमो रेडिएशन इज द ट्रीटमेंट वॉट इज कीमो रेडिएशन बिफोर रेडिएशन जब सिर्फ प्लाटिंग या कोई भी केमिकल ड्रग देना जरूरी है दैट इज नोन एज कीमो रेडिएशन ओके so few four lines which can be asked because ca cervix is important the most common type of ca cervix is squamous cell carcinoma the most common route is the direct route the most common cause of death is the uremia and the most important prognostic factor factor is a stage stage staging of the disease is the most so these are the four questions which can be asked these are evergreen questions the most common cancer is a squamous cell carcinoma the most common route of spread is the direct route and the most common cause of most important prognostic marker is a staging and most common cause of death in the csr is uremia okay the ovarian tumors they are of three types epithelial germ cell and sex cord they always ask you in this which ovarian tumor is of which type so here i want to tell you that germ cell is nothing but ovum germ cell is nothing but ovum and as you all know that ovum when fertilized with the sperm it forms a pregnancy so what is pregnancy pregnancy is fetus placenta and yolk cell so pregnancy is fetus placenta and yolk cell okay so whenever these words are used it means they are the germ cell tumor the the epithelial ovarian tumor it occurs in a old age lady and it is 90% of all the tumor so which is the most common tumor ovarian tumor if they ask you you will be answering it as the epithelial ovarian tumor and out of the epithelial you have to learn only three serous mucinous and clear cell tumor serous mucinous and clear cell tumor okay serous tumor is a serous tumor is a, a, a most common of all of them serous tumor is a most common of all of them and uh, uh, clear cell is the worst of all of them germ cell tumor as i told you what does the germ cell is germ cell is is the ovum germ cell is the uh, ovum ovum when fertilizes makes a pregnancy so all the terms related to pregnancy will be used this germinoma fetus placenta yolk cell so whenever the obstetric terms come here it means that it is the germ cell tumor it is the germ cell tumor okay this germinoma uh, is the most common malignant germ cell tumor germ cell tumor occurs in the young age and this germinoma is the most common malignant germ cell tumor and the teratoma and the teratoma contains the three layers the teratoma contains the three layers three germ cell layer okay the sex cord tumor mainly contains the granulosa the sex cord tumor mainly contains the granulosa cell tumor metastatic the metastatic tumor the when the tumor is there in the stomach stomach it when the tumor is there in the stomach um stomach then it spreads to the ovary most common site and that tumor which has spread it that is if the stomach cancer wala patient has the ovarian masses it is nothing it is a metastatic tumor the most common site where the stomach cancer spread is ovary and then that tumor is known as a krukenberg tumor on the histopath it has the signet ring cells so most commonly they ask you two questions whenever you get a adnexal mass in the reproductive age which is very common what you will be do so your next step is ultrasound and if the ultrasound say it benign you are going to follow up after uh, after 3 to 4 months okay and if the ultrasound say it malignant then you are going to do the cystectomy okay so whenever you get a 
at next cell mass in the reproductive stage your next step will be the ultrasound and and if the ultrasound say it as malignant you are going to do the cystectomy when the ultrasound will say it when the ultrasound will say it that what are the features which are present on the ultrasound which say that it is malignant the features which suggest that the adnexal mass is malignant are the solid components papillary excrescences thick septa increased vascularity ascites lymph node involvement ascites and lymph node involvement okay so these are the component meek syndrome is the uh, uh, fibroma which is uh, benign uh, in form it is not malignant no doubt it is associated with ascites in spite of associating with ascites it is benign in if in the post menopausal lady they ask you what you will do with the adnexal mass in the reproductive lady you are were doing only ultrasound and your management depends on ultrasound and if ultrasound says it benign you accept that it is benign it benign because in a reproductive uh, lady there are lot of hormonal changes because in a reproductive age lady there are lot of hormonal changes so you accept that due to that hormonal changes there might be a mass form but in the post menopausal lady already there are no such hormonal changes there there are no such hormonal changes so you straight away eh, you have to go for two things ultrasound and ca125 so along with the ultrasound on you have to go for the another measure that is ca125 ovarian cancers as they are staged surgically and they are responsive to chemotherapy that also cis platin based okay that also cis platin based endometrial cancer risk factor are asked nothing else is asked don't worry okay endometrial cancer risk factors are in mainly increased proliferation or increased estrogen increase endometrial proliferation increase endometrial proliferation okay so obesity hypertension and diabetes mellitus in the patient who are obese diabetes and hypertensive they have increased cholesterol and there are very high chances of having the endometrial cancer and when they have it this syndrome and this association is known as the corpus cancer syndrome this association is known as the corpus cancer syndrome okay so the two the two questions which are repeatedly your pyqs the two risk factors which are repeatedly asked in your pyqs is the tamoxifen because tamoxifen is a agonist at endometrium tamoxifen hrt if it is given without progesterone and the next is the uh, granulosa cell tumor next is the granulosa cell tumor granulosa cell tumor aapka pichli baar bhi pyq tha granulosa cell tumor is a tumor of granulosa cell it secretes estrogen it secretes estrogen and and this estrogen causes endometrial hyperplasia this estrogen causes endometrial hyperplasia the gene mutation which is rela related to the endometrial cancer is cowden mutation and hn is okay ocps are protective both for the estrogenic cancers for the ovarian cancer and endometrial cancer both it is protective if there is abnormal vaginal bleeding in more than 35 years age or there is post menopausal bleeding in the first step is the tvs and the the best step is the endometrial biopsy if on the biopsy there is hyperplasia with atypia then your treatment is hysterectomy and if it is without atypia then your treatment is then your treatment is progesterone then your treatment is progesterone syphilis and torch they not cause recurrent pregnancy loss syphilis and torch yesterday this point was left syphilis and torch they don't cause recurrent pregnancy loss that was all about the gynae 
थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग मी पी डी एफ विल बी अवेलेबल ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर टूमोरोज एग्जाम डू वेल कम अप विद फ्लाइंग कलर्स सी होपिंग टू सी यू ऑन द अदर साइड वेन यू हैव कवर द नाइनटीन सब्जेक्ट्स देन ऑफकोर्स यू शुड यू विल बी एबल टू कंट्रोल ऑल दिस माइनर फैक्टर्स स्ट्रेस एंगजाइटी एंड ऑल दिस फैक्टर्स सी यू सोन ऑन द अदर साइड टेक केयर गुड बाय